you don't see them on YouTube. Um, just so you know, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not a financial advice. Um, and yeah, other thing I want to say before the video starts is the Apex code has about three more days left. Okay, go use the code in my in the description. The Apex Save 90 code. Type in Save 90 in the thing and the discount. Again, they're really good practice. They put a little bit of pressure on you more than a demo account would. So they're really good practice and those. Apex accounts are really how I started formulating my rules, my model, my strategy, and it just feels a little more realer than a demo account. So go use those if you're interested. Click the link. Um, and yeah, so let's get started in the video. So I'm going to be going over top rate analysis, which by the way, I did record this video once and the mic wasn't on. So this is, this is a second go. All right, so my top down analysis, what I do at the beginning of every week, Sunday night, I go to the weekly time frame and I try to guess, okay, where's the next weekly candle likely to expand to? Okay, this is the first first lit, first bullet point in the checklist. Okay, and this week, I'm going to just do the analysis now, right? But this week, I think, okay, the first candle is likely to expand to, or the candle next week is likely to expand to this high. Why? Well, one, I see us, we bounce off a bullish bear value gap. Two, we have a order block we're creating right here. So this should create the expansion the next week, right? And three, right, the momentum up of your value gap usually tells me, okay, the draw's the next high. And the most obvious next high in the weekly is, it's obviously these little highs in here, right? Little high, little high. But this is the ultimate high. This would be the next target where I'd like to expect the expansion to. So what I do is I just mark the weekly. And because I'm a scalper and day trader, some even though I'm expecting the next candle to go up this week, it doesn't mean I'm not going to take a short. Because if I see a short on like a 15 minute time frame, I'll still take it. So that I only usually check this once a week, right? But sometimes I'll check it throughout the week, like midweek, just to see how the weekly candle is shaping. But usually it's just a Sunday night. Um, so yeah. Okay, next, next top down analysis checklist, right? I go to the daily time frame, and this is where I start to look for PB raise, right? Important PB raise, which obviously I, I note them in the weekly, right? On the on EX out, I noted this one, okay? But I I draw them a little more in the daily. So the daily, I know there's this bear value gap, right? And if we go to uh, this swing low to this swing high or this swing high here, I know this bear value gap is a discount. This one was too, but this also lines up with a bounce price range. So this is like where I start to mark, mark important fair value gaps, right? I, I mark this one because it lines up with the daily price range, right? And it's in discount, so why not bounce from here? Why would we need to bounce from here, right? So kind of marked the important PB raise. The other one I kind of marked this week was this one, okay? And I saw, okay, what do we get? A giant red can or giant green can are going through this daily fair value gap, which tells me what? The draw on liquidity is going to be this. To me, this is the weekly draw on liquidity, this is the black line, but to me, this is the daily draw. So I always know there's a possibility of going like this, right? And then hitting the weekly draw. So it's important to know, okay, here's a daily draw, here's a weekly draw, because we might not get in the weekly draw until next Friday. We could make a huge move up on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then go down, then hit the weekly draw later. So it's important to know, like, okay, this is the daily draw, this is the weekly draw, because even though the weekly draw is up here, Right, there could still be a big down move in the middle of the week, and we're not expecting that. So, as of right now, still bullish. Um, it would be nice if we could get a lower entry, but really in the daily time frame, I like to mark important PB raise, right? Like volume and balances, daily for value gaps, order blocks. Like right? this is important breaker block to mark, right? So I see we broke above it. I want to see this user support now to hit this high. So, those are really that's what I do in the daily. Uh, and then after that, I go to the four hour. This is where I kind of mark the more precise PB raise. So if I have a, a daily fair value gap marked, on the four hour, what I'll do is I'll kind of narrow it down a little bit. For the four hour, I'll see like, okay, this is one giant big green candle. It also lines up with this inverse fair value gap. So ideally, right here, this is important fair value gap and it's on the four hour. And it's just a little more precise than the daily. And this is kind of my condition. So if you didn't watch that last video, watch the last video. I kind of talked about conditions, right? This this uh, candle, as long as this holds, my condition is okay. As long as this holds, look for long setups out of this, and then the draw is going to be this high. So that's kind of what I use the the four hour for. I just draw more precise for value gaps rather than okay. If I drew this one right here, right, you're probably not going to see this cleanly in the daily, which in this example, it's not. 
as clean, right? It's kind of taking up this work a little bit. But in the four hour, just can be a little more precise than the daily. And the four hour is still a great time frame that swing traders use. So I think it's important to know. Okay, so once I'm done with the four hour, this is when I go to the one hour. And the one hour, just look for a little more precise for value gaps. I don't take my entries out the one hour, but I do kind of pay attention to some order blocks in the one hour as well. Okay, so like right here, these two green candles before the stop move, and then those are order blocks. So like, I know as long as we stay below these, I know we're bearish, right? So that's like an example, okay? And those where I like, I like the mark for hourly order blocks. I don't really take entries out them, but what I'll do is, okay, if I see us rejecting them, I'll, I'll look for like a short setup in a smaller time frame. So hourly, I like to mark order blocks. Sometimes I'll mark fair value gaps, but what happens here is, see how these are like multiple fair value gaps? There's just four of them. Like, how do you know which one to take, right? That's really when I say, okay, well, I know there's three of them here. Then I check the five time frame to see if there's one, right? In the four hour, we know there's one. So it's like, okay, I know there's a lot of different fair value gaps in the one hour right here, but the four hour, it's just one big fair value gap. So as long as you hold any of these, I'm kind of looking for a long setup. And that's kind of what I do on the one hour. So if I do see like five fair value gaps in the one hour, I anticipate it being okay. If I go to the four hour, look for the one fair value gap instead of having all four drawn because obviously you don't know where or which fair value gap we're going to mark or bounce from more likely than not we're gonna bounce on the ones in discount right but in this example we didn't so we end up bouncing for the one a premium which is which is totally fine but that's why you should just draw just the four hour one because at least it's one and it also lines up with this inverse for value gap so four hour again I like to just draw a single fair value gap sometimes one hourly if there's more than one I, I just I look at the two hour, three hour, see if it's just one, just so I can draw it, okay? Next up, we got, so one hour, four hour, daily, weekly, I use my bias. Next up, we got the 15 minute. 15 minute, I don't really typically use for entries, but 15 minute, I look for, okay, as long as this fair value gap holds, I'm gonna take like a five minute or one hour trade. So, for example, in the 15 minute, I draw the most important fair value gaps to see if there's gonna be a precise or spot we're gonna bounce. So like this fair value gap catches my eye, and then this fair value gap catches my eye. Okay, the reason why this one does is because, and this one, because you can kind of see, you get consolidation up and then big green candle, it's kind of two small moves here, big green candle. So to me in this leg, these are the most obvious for value gaps. And if I know this is a is a giant four hour free value gap, but likely the chance that we bounce in a spot where there is a bunch of orders in the shortest amount of time, that's gonna be the spot where we bounce from. So like this one or this one, and obviously we didn't bounce in this one, but we did this one. So really that your conditions are, okay, look for a long step out of this. As long as this holds, I think the draws up. Same thing with this. If we cut below this, well, if we hold this and look, get a long step out of this, your draw on liquidity should be higher. Look for a long step out of this. Okay. If we cut through this, I would really look for a long out of this, right? This one is actually a discount, I think. Yeah. So this one's even a discount, which is even better. But unfortunately, we didn't get it. So really, the 15 minute, I look for a little more precise for value gaps where they stand out a little more, right? So this one, this one, this one stand out to me a little more just because the size compared to these candles, right? Okay, and that's what I use. I don't really typically blindly enter. What I'll do is I'll be like, okay, this is a 15 minute for value gap, and now I'll go into one or five, and I'll look for a long from the one or five from here. Okay, and then anything five below, I literally just look for entries. So right here I know this is a foot and you could even make this you could look for even more precise for value gaps in 15 minute so in the five minute you can narrow this down a little bit and what you can see is okay very big gap here look for a long entry off here was there ever a long entry here no there was not there's no market structure shift there is no there's no uh, fair value gap entry okay what about this one was there a long out this yes there was right there's a fair value gap coming off of it right so we got a Fair value gap, four minutes out of fair value gap, right? This is your confirmation entry. This is where you look for long. And you can just see we never got it here, okay? Which is okay. Uh, but we did get it here, which is nice. Okay, so that's kind of what I do in the five minute. I use five minute for entries, five minute, four minute, three minute, two minute, one minute, all for entries. And sometimes if you want to be really precise, okay, draw out the five minute fair value gap here and then go to the one, then enter out the one if you notice we're bouncing up this five. Okay, 
if you let's say you miss this bounce up to five, there's still probably going to be one minute entries going up here. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I do. Okay, so really I start with a weekly, daily, four hour, one hour for bias, um, and you kind of heard me what I. You heard what I use each one for. Basically, weekly, I'm got, trying to guess the draw where the next weekly candle is likely to go. Daily, I'm trying to draw important for the rally gaps I see to the left. Four hour, I'm trying to look for just a little more precise for rally gaps that will kind of show me entries for the daily. One hour, I typically, one hour, I do like to draw order blocks. I like to draw order blocks in the one hour. And then one hour, I just draw a... Um, Typically, just if there's smaller for every like gaps or sing, a single one rather than the four hour, I'll do that. But again, like I said, if there's like three for every like gaps in another one hour, but it's only one in the four hour, I just mark the one in the four hour. Okay, and then 15 minute, what I do is I use that more for okay, if this for every like gap pull is I'm bullish, right? And I'll look for an entry in the five, do one minute time frame based on if we're holding like a 15 minute for every like gap, right? So those are kind of what I use my all time frames for okay that's my top down analysis i do this every sunday night okay everything down from the daily i do every day weekly I only do once every sunday okay sometimes i'll check it midweek but typically just the one once during the sunday because as a day trader and scalper i don't really need to know because i can still short even though i think the weekly candle is expanding up right so that's how i do my top down analysis hope you guys enjoyed this video like and subscribe. We just hit 5K subscribers. I really appreciate that. Um, you guys are the best. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'll see you guys later. Peace.